and welcome to the phases of matter. So as we all know, you have the three phases of matter that we are taught in elementary school, and they are what? Solid, liquid, and gas. However, what is this plasma? You've seen plasma balls if you were a kid. I used to actually have one. It's, uh, it's actually broken now. And you hear about plasma everywhere. I actually recently just posted um, on my social media an image of the Space Shuttle Enterprise, which actually has a coating that is supposed to be protecting the Space Shuttle from the plasma barrier that forms around the Space Shuttle when it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. So let's just start out with the basics. Take something like a water molecule. So you have H2O, which is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Now, what happens when water, that is liquid that you're drinking from a bottle, becomes ice? What exactly is happening? So you're actually cooling the temperature down, right? Isn't ice a lot colder than liquid water? So what's happening now is all the atoms are getting a lot closer, tighter together, and this is what forms the ice. However, if you start to now heat it up a little bit, and then it turns into a liquid state. And then this liquid state, if you keep heating it up, what happens? It's like you're po boiling a pot of water. It's going to start to evaporate. It's going to turn into a gaseous form. So now we wonder what would happen if we keep heating up this water molecule. If anybody is familiar with atoms, the way that they actually work is in the nucleus, you have something called electrons and something called protons. Generally, it is an even amount of protons to electrons. If you have two protons, you have two electrons. So what starts to happen now is through this constant heat and temperature, the atoms now start to become ionized. And ionized just means that they're transforming into ions. Ions just pretty much mean that there's an unequal amount of electrons to protons. So now what's starting to happen is these electrons are being stripped from the atoms, from the molecules, because this is happening, the texture and the material starts to kind of change and it turns into something that is called plasma. So now, why am I even talking about plasma? Why do I see it as something important to be teaching our kids? Well, because we actually see it every day. We see it in our fluorescent light bulbs and actually lightning. Lightning comes from a change in temperature. It comes from the molecules and the clouds being ionized and it's actually our sun. Every single star in the solar system is just a ball of plasma. Now something exciting that I actually learned recently was from Death by Black Hole, which I referred to in my last video, and also when I was working at the Intrepid and I was underneath the Space Shuttle Enterprise, I was taught about the reinforced carbon-carbon panels and the silica panels that actually cover the exterior of the space shuttle. And I thought, well, what is the purpose of this material as opposed to other materials? Well, first of all, it's lightweight. Secondly, it actually is really good for protecting the shuttle and everything inside from extreme heat. Now, plasma is extremely, extremely hot. When the space shuttle is re-entering through Earth's atmosphere, you're going to see many different layers of Earth's atmosphere. However, the closest layer to Earth's surface is called the troposphere. Now, when it enters through the troposphere, the air is very, very thin and extremely fast speeds in which the space shuttle is moving, a plasma barrier begins to form around the space shuttle. So in order to protect it, we need these carbon-carbon panels and the silica panels. And that is my finale on plasma. And I will definitely be doing a video on the GOES R weather satellite that we're going to be launching soon. Um, I was just informed today that NASA has announced that it is going to be delayed, the launch, um, by probably a few weeks. Um, this is due to Hurricane Matthew that just hit Florida. Uh, so I will still be going to NASA. I'm very excited. So be sure to follow me on my journey there And I will be doing a really awesome video just to explain to you guys what exactly is so special about the Gozar satellite As opposed to all the other weather satellites that we have So if you haven't already, please do subscribe and definitely leave any suggestions that you guys have in uh, the comments below So I love learning new topics and talking about new things. Okay. Thanks so much for the support guys. Bye